Hello everybody, welcome back. Got an update today to the Dynamic LOD program. This is now an official branch off of the original program, which was an adaptation of the FSX version. The person who did the adaptation from the FSX version to the MSFS 2020 version didn't want to continue to, to develop the program. Fortunately, we have somebody who does. And they have added some really wonderful features to the program. Uh, I did a video about a week ago, which went through all of the new changes in detail. I'm not going to go over all that stuff again. I will put the link to that video in the description if you want a more detailed, clearer explanation of some of the features that have already existed in the, in the previous version. Please go back and watch that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go over those changes briefly in this program, but what I'm really going to focus on is the new features that have been brought in version 0.3.6. Um, the other big change to this is that it is now on GitHub, uh, so you can download it from GitHub. You can install this program separately from all the previous versions, including version 0.3.5, which was the, the last version before this one. Um, and so let's go through real quick uh, some of the things that we've already gone over. Again, longer, more detailed descriptions are going to be in the video that I put in the description. Um, you have six profiles that you can use to save different settings, depending on what, you know, what you're flying and where you're flying, however you want to um, set up your profiles. It automatically detects whether you whether you are using PC or VR, so you no longer have to, to designate that. Um, I'm going to go back to profile one. So this cruise LOD updates checkbox is by default not checked. Uh, what cruise LOD is, let's say you're cruising along um, above terrain, let's say above undulating terrain, you know, your level coming in on an approach, you're give or take 7,500 feet above the ground, but because of the undulating terrain below you, you might be at 7,400, then 7,600, then 7,450, then 7,550, and this would trigger back and forth between 300 and 150 constantly if this cruise LED updates box is not checked. If you do check it, what it's going to do is smooth out those transitions between uh, or around that 7,500 foot AGL number so you're not constantly getting your your terrain level detail switched all over the place. Um, the LOD step max, again, this is, this, this is described in much more detail in the previous video. Um, what this does is a couple things. Number one, it, it, it anticipates the amount of time it's going to take you to reach your next LOD level, either in this case 3,000 feet, 7,500 feet, whatever, um, based on your rate of climb or descent, and it changes your LOD values by 5 in each case until it hits that 300. So in other words, if you're, at, if you're climbing from 3,000 through 7,500, it's not going to stay at 150 until 7,499 feet and then jump from 150 to 300. That's a very big jump. What it's going to do is anticipate how many seconds it's going to take to go from 150 to 300 when you do it in steps of five. And then it's going to start doing that, let's say, 30 seconds before you are likely to reach this 7,500 foot level so that the transition is smooth and doesn't happen all at one time. Okay. Um, the OLOD thing we've talked about, you, by default, these, these values are reversed. The 100 is here, 150 is here, and then 200 is at the 7,500 foot level. But we want the OLOD to be higher when we're on the ground and lower as we get up in the sky. So you want to reverse those numbers to what I have here. OLOD does not have as big an impact on sim performance as TLOD does, so I don't really think that it's something you're going to have to do a lot of experimenting with. I would set it to what you see here and see if that works for you. Um, and moving on to the FPS adaptation setting, 
so this is not you don't have to use this feature um, if you select it what you're saying is that you want to you want to limit your LOD values your TLOD and OLOD when your target average frame rate is below whatever this value is okay so let's say you've got it set for 30 um, when your sim goes below an average frame frame rate per second of 30 it's going to reduce your TLOD and OLOD by whatever these values are okay um, 50 and 50 are the standard and then it will go down to a minimum of whatever you have set here 100 and 100 is the default um, so I've seen people that have set an, a, a terrain level of detail of 50 on the ground. That's perfectly fine. You would want to put, you would want to replicate that number here. Now, again, the, this LOD step max feature applies with uh, the FPS adaptation. So, if you go below 30 frames per second, it's not going to drop it instantly by 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 a fact by a number of 50. It's going to decrease it five at a time to see whether smaller decreases is going to get you back above that 30 frames per second value if it does not it's going to continue to decrease until it decreases by a maximum of this number down to a minimum value of whatever you have set here okay until you get back above that 30 frames per second and then it's going to walk it back up again to whatever your value that you have set here. So what it means is you're going to get a much more gradual change in the uh, FPS, in, in the LOD changes. Rather than big jumps, you're going to get smaller gradual changes, which should give you much better performance in terms of smoothness. Uh, and, and that's what this program is all about. Now... Uh, there are two new additions to this program. Number one is the delay start, okay? And the delay start uh, feature is to prevent the FPS adaptation from false triggering uh, when there's a transient FPS drop from an external app or from panning around too quickly. Okay, so if, if you uh, use, uh, let's say... Uh, track IR5 like I do um, or if you use your mouse to you know to move around the cockpit whatever um, let me go in here uh, if you know if you turn your head very quickly or if you move very qu quickly with the mouse um, what what this means is uh, I have a setting of two here so it means that it's not going to trigger the FPS adaptation at a value of 30 until it's below 30 for two seconds okay so very brief transient changes in you know that, that that put you below this 30 frames per second or whatever whatever you have set here is not going to trigger the fps adaptation until it is you know until it's occurring over a longer period of time and, and by longer period of time this is two seconds um the developer recommends one second or two, depends on what you, your preference is. Um, and that's just going to prevent this from, from triggering all the time. If, if you, you know, make a movement or if a program, there's a program interaction with FF, MFSS, MSFS that causes a brief drop in frames um, below this value. So that's really helpful. Um, the other thing is, uh, so this is the decrease cloud quality setting. This is the new addition to this version of the program, which is going to be incredibly useful to a lot of people. So you can see here that I have my uh, cloud quality set to ultra. Okay. Um, when my, if, if I have this FPS adaptation, set to on and the decreased cloud quality set to on what this is going to do is when my target fps drops below 30 it's going to drop my cloud quality from ultra to high okay and uh i have found even very light kind of misty clouds 
um, that you can see perfectly well th straight through them have a pretty big impact on FPS in the simulator. So this is a great addition to this program. What it's going to do, you can see here it's got the Cloud Recovery FPS Plus, okay? When you drop below 30 frames per second, it's going to drop your cloud value by one, in addition to what it's doing here, whatever you've got set here. It's going to decrease your cloud, cloud quality setting by one. Mine is going to be from ultra to uh, high. And if you've got it set at high, it would be from high to medium, etc. Okay? Now, it is going to keep... It is going to keep your cloud setting at that lower setting until your FPS reach, <laughs> reaches 30 plus whatever value you have here, which in my case is 10, for a period of this amount of time. And so what this is what this is doing is it's preventing this this program from flipping your cloud quality back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because if you're flying in the clouds and the cloud quality changes every two or three seconds you are really going to notice it it might help you with the you know it might trigger you up and up above this 30 frames per second or 50 or whatever you have it set for um, and then trigger it back in the other direction and you're going to get a lot of visual changes and it's not going to be uh, pretty so it's going to drop it one level until it gets to 30 plus whatever you have set here, which in my case is 10, so that would be 40, for a period of at least 10 seconds. Now, you can set this however you want it. If, if your uh, F, target FPS is 60, um, and let's say you want it to be at least 80 before it restores your cloud quality and you can see since I've changed this target value and the, the cloud FPS value it has now triggered and reduced my cloud quality you can see that and reduced because my my fr frames per second right now is 59.95 so my TLD has dropped to this my OLD has dropped well has actually gone up because we're we're lower and my cloud quality has dropped because we're below 60 frames per second so now let's say we set it at 50 frames per second and I set this at 5. Now let's watch what it does. It comes back to ultra. Okay. Um, so again, it's going to prevent your cloud quality from changing based on just barely exceeding or undershooting this target. So this, is, this works as a buffer. Um, so an FPS plus of 10 and 10 seconds, maybe you want longer than that. Maybe you want 30 seconds. Depends on what kind of flying you do. Depends on where you fly, you know, what the weather typically is. Um, you so you're going to have to play with that to see what works for you. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful new feature. It's going to make things uh gonna gonna give you m much more smoothness much better smoothness in scenarios when you're flying in the clouds and all of these gradual changes with the step max adds to all this it's just a wonderful program the development is superb really really grateful um for the developer who has taken this up if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the uh, comment section. And we thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.